Okay, how to convert units of measure. So that's what this video is going to be about. And you can see here I have some um, basic uh, conversion factors. Um, we're going to kind of play around with some of these guys here and illustrate a couple different ways that you can approach this. And then I'm going to um, really hone in on one method I think is um, the best way for you to remember because it's going to serve you well in other classes and in more advanced um, uh, problems where the units of measure are, are more complicated. But we'll get into that in a second. If you're uh, new to my channel, I hope you consider subscribing. I have a lot of uh, uh, many, many videos on mathematics, uh, specifically various levels. So, um, uh, you know, if you're looking for additional math help, I think you'll find a lot on my channel. So uh, hit that subscribe button. And uh, additionally, if you're looking for maybe more formal or more in-depth instruction, I have uh, various math classes. I'll leave a link to the description of those in this video. But with that being said, let's get into how to convert units of measure. All right, so what are we talking about here in the first place? Well, converting units of measure is just going from one unit to another. So for example, let's say I have a table here. Let's just draw this out. And the table is three feet. Okay, so three feet uh, uh, wide is the, the length of this uh, table, okay? Well, you know, if you want to measure this table in uh, something other than feet, okay, feet is the current unit, how could you measure it? Well, we could look at this in terms of inches, so this is 36 inches, and three feet is actually one yard as well, okay? So we have various units that are equal to one another. Now this is within uh, the standard unit of measure, and let me just go off on a quick tangent here. You have two basic uh, units of measure. You have the US standard system, and this is mostly familiar with folks like in uh, the United States and I believe in Canada as well. Then you have the metric system. Right, so pretty much the U.S. we use things like feet, uh, miles. You know, when we talk about the speed of your your car, you're talking about miles per hour. <clears throat> Where in other countries, most of the rest of the world uses the metric system, so we're talking about kilometers per hour, right? And we're talking about meters, etc. The difference is the metric system is uh, based on powers of ten. Okay, now this is a whole separate lesson in and of itself. So I'm not going to get deep into the metric system or deep into the standard system. I just want to talk about how do we convert um, from one unit to another, okay? But I just wanted to set this up so you have a sense of what we're talking about, okay? So for this uh, basic example, this table, if I wanted to go from feet to inches, I would need to know some sort of equivalency. I need to know the relationship between feet and inches. And you can find this like on a conversion chart, all right? So a conversion chart or conversion factors, they're, you can look these up. <clears throat> they're pretty much everywhere, like on the internet or on, uh, you know, um, different, just pretty much any, any place. Like if you're, in your, you're studying science or math, you'll find a conversion chart. And if you, if you can't find it in a particular book, you just look online and you convert. They even have conversion calculators, etc. So if you're like, well, I can easily go from feet to, to inches or <clears throat> uh, quarts to gallons, you know, I can use a conversion chart or conversion calculator and it solves my problem. Yes, that's true. But what, I'm, what I want to get across here is how um, uh, the method you want to use to convert units because it's going to help you not only one, not to make a mistake if you don't have a uh, conversion um, calculator handy, but it's also going to help you in more advanced classes like chemistry, um, physics, where you're starting to deal with much more complicated units of measure. Okay, so these concepts still apply. Okay, so let's just talk real quick about uh, something really basic. So most of you out there probably know that, okay, I have three feet and if I want to go to inches, I know that there's 12 inches and one foot. So I just multiply by 12 and I get 36 inches. Okay. And you would be correct, right? Now, <clears throat> uh, in this case, with from feet to inches, we just multiply by 12, right? Now, Sometimes what happens, where let's take something like this, four quarts and one gallon, 
sometimes if students don't know if they should multiply or they get confused whether they should multiply or divide. So for example, let's see here, two gallons should, I want to go to quarts, do I multiply by four or do I divide by four? Okay, it's a very common um, mistake, okay, where students are like, they'll get confused, you know, they're like, mm, should I multiply or, or divide? A course with something that you're super familiar with, like feet and, and inches or minutes and seconds, you know, yeah, you're like, oh, that's easy. But now when you start getting into things like, uh, well, let's say kilometers, meters, uh, <clears throat> grams, milligrams, especially at quarts, gallons, and other type of other of uh, units that you may not uh, interact with as much, these students confuse this, okay? So what I want to do is give you a way or show you a, a way where um, you won't uh, confuse it. So let's uh, let's talk. Uh, let's actually use this one as an example. Okay, four quarts is equal to one gallon. So the key is what I want you to do is to write this conversion, this relationship, as a fraction. Okay, so you can write it one or two ways. Four quarts, all right, is equal to one gallon. Okay, so you, let's use. Um, uh, different uh, abbreviation for quarts, but I'm just kind of writing this out. So you can have four quarts is uh, per one gallon. Okay, so this is a um, um, a ratio here: four quarts per one gallon, or one gallon. Let me write it this way. This is still the same as one gallon per four quarts. Okay. They're both the same, okay? These conversion factors are the same. So, and it's the same um, as this. Four quarts is equal to one gallon. Four quarts per one gallon or one gallon per four quarts. Now, why do I want you to think of these guys in terms of fractions, okay? Well, I'll show you why. So let's go to, let's say we had 10 quarts, all right? And I wanted to know how many gallons, okay? Now, somebody could just do this in your head and that's fine, but just kind of indulge me here for a second because this is going to, you know, we start with easy examples and obviously it gets more complicated. So when we're trying to go from quarts, let's say in this example, to gallons, I want to end, I want to get rid of quarts, right? And I want to end up with gallons. So I want to know how many uh, gallons 10 quarts is, okay? <clears throat> Here's how you do it. So we start off with 10 quarts. I want you to write that unit of measure, what you're starting off with as a fraction. Just put it over one, just like that, okay? Now notice the unit of measure, quarts, is in the numerator. Very specifically, it's in the top part of the fraction, okay? So this is, goes for all uh, uh, units of uh, measure that we want to convert. So we're going to start off, let me show you that again. So if I want to go to 10 quarts, to how many gallons? Just take the 10 quarts, right? Put it over one, all right? Where the unit of measure that you're trying to get rid of, quarts is in the numerator, right? Now, how do we get rid of the quarts? So here's the key, okay? I have to select a conversion factor. I know that four quarts is, there's four quarts per one gallon and, and or one gallon per four quart. They're equivalent, I mean, in terms of, um, how they express the relationship between quarts and gallons, but I want to multiply this guy by one of these conversion factors, okay? We call these guys here conversion factors. So which one, okay? It would make a big difference, right? If I use this guy here, I'd be multiplying by four, and if I use this one, I'm going to be dividing by four. So which conversion factor do I use? Well, let's go ahead and answer this. We're going to use this one right here, okay? And I'm going to show you why. So I want to use one gallon is uh, one gallon per four quarts. Now, why did I select this one? Okay, when you multiply fractions, okay, we're gonna mul we multiply across the numerator times the numerator and the denominator times the denominator. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually do this. So this would be ten quarts times one gallon over okay one times four quarts one times four quarts let me give myself a little more room here all right so you see what i just did here i'm just multiplying the numerator uh, numerators together and denominators together now you don't have to go through all of this when you get better at this i'm just i'm kind of taking i'm writing a little bit more out just to make a point here 
Now here's the key, right? I wanted to go from quarts to gallons. Now here is the, the thing that you really need to pay attention to. Do you see quarts here? I have quarts in the numerator and I have quarts down here in the uh, denominator, okay? What I can do, or what you need to do, is cross out the units of measure, one for one, okay? So if I got one quart down here, or one quart's in the numerator, I can cross out one, one quart in the denominator. So I wanna be very uh, specific about this because let's say I had um, a scenario where I had centimeter, uh, I'm just making something up here, feet, um, and then I had another centimeter down here, and I had another centimeter down here, okay? Let's say I had a fraction scenario like this. So one centimeter, this unit could cross cancel just one in the denominator, okay? You can't cross cancel both. Now this, this is very important when you're dealing with units of measure, uh, you know, more complicated units of measure like in physics and things and chemistry. Believe me, <laughs> you're, you're, you, when you take those courses, you'll understand exactly what I'm saying, okay? So in this scenario though, what I want you to understand is that you can cross cancel, okay, units of measure. So when I do that, I get rid of the quarts, and I'm left with what? Gallons. That's what I want to be left with, right? So 10 times 1 gallon is just 10 gallons, and then 1 times 4 is simply 4. So you just take 10 <clears throat> divided by 4 if you want to do that. Let me get my little handy-dandy calculator here, and we'll, we'll go ahead and just get that decimal. But... Um, you know, we don't have to do it for this particular example, but let's go and wrap it up anyways. That's 2.5, right? So 2.5 gallons, all right? That's the key. So don't, I'm not gonna uh, um, drag out this video much more than this, uh, but if you understand what I just did here, then you're gonna be, you're gonna be set, okay? So let's, let me go ahead and just erase this and we'll maybe take a look at another example here. So the key, again, we have these convert, like a conversion chart, okay? You're typically gonna see things like this, and we wanna write the conversion chart, the relationship as a conversion factor. Remember, a factor, a factor is something you multiply by. So I have one unit, I'm gonna multiply by a conversion factor, and then I'm gonna get the unit of measure that I want to get to, okay? But which one? Let's take a look at uh, this guy here, okay? So this is going from feet to meters. So um, again, one foot is equal to 0 0.304 meters. So I can write that as this way, one foot per 0 0.304 meters. That's one way I can write that conversion factor or 0 0.304 meters per every one foot. They're both equivalent. So if I wanted to go, let's say, uh, let's say uh, 16 meters is how many feet? Okay, let's say I had that problem. 16 meters is how many feet? Again, some of you could be like, oh, I just know the conversion factor, I'll just multiply or divide. But trust me, believe me when I tell you, so many students confuse. They'll multiply when they should divide and they'll divide when they should multiply. And even if you do get these problems right because you just know what to do, you're not gonna be able to handle more complicated units of measure without knowing how to work with these conversion factors and cross canceling units of measure as I'm showing you here. So let's go, let's just take a look at this problem real quick. 16 meters is how many feet? So again, I wanna get rid of meters, right? And I wanna be, I wanna end up with feet. That's the goal. I'm gonna go from 16 meters and I wanna be, uh, I wanna end up with the unit of measure of feet. So 16 meters over one, right? So you just take that, what you're starting with, and you put it over one, and I wanna have meters down here in the denominator, so they cross cancel, and I wanna have feet up on top. That's what I'm gonna be left with. So which one uh, of these conversion factors should I select? This one here, right? So I got one foot per 0.304 meters, okay? The meters cross cancel, and I'm left with 16 feet over 0 0.304. So let me get my calculator out, and we'll actually do this. So let's see, 16 divided by 0 0.304 is equal to 52.63. So 52.63, and you got to put that unit in there, feet. Okay. 
All right, so hopefully you kind of get the, uh, a sense of how to handle this. Now, mind you, depending on what grade you're in or what class you're in, your teacher may be teaching you um, uh, a different approach, especially with the metric system because you could just – it's powers of 10 um, or <clears throat> in the standard system, you just multiply or divide. That's fine. You know, you should always – kind of um, do what your teacher wants to do when you're in that particular class. But if you're, um, if you're not aware of how to convert units of measure using, you know, focusing on conversion factors and cross-canceling the units um, and being left with the unit that you want, then you should, you know, at least now you are, because this is exactly how you're going to have to approach it in, um, as, you, as you advance through your math, you know, mathematics and in science for sure, okay? There's just too much going on um, with, uh, especially like in chemistry. Those of you out there have taken chemistry, and you'll know there's very, you know, the units really kind of get, uh, you know, more involved. I don't want to, maybe the word complicated might be too much, but definitely involved, okay, where you have to keep track of what's going on. But um, anyways, with that being said, let's go and wrap up this video. So again, um, uh Hopefully, you know, uh, you like uh, what you see in terms of my videos. I have a ton of stuff out there I think you'll find very useful. So I hope you uh, consider becoming a subscriber. If you do, make sure you hit that bell notification. If you enjoyed the video, I definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. Uh, you know, it's the only way I get better, and it gives me ideas on, um, you know, future videos I can do for you. So I'm always trying to, you know, stay active on uh, YouTube producing good content, you know, that's going to help you out, you know, in practical ways. Um, and then last but not least, if you, you know, if you're looking for something much more formal or comprehensive, you know, if you have to get ready for a particular exam or if you're really struggling in, in a class and you need a, a lot of, uh, you know, math instruction and examples, then you may want to check out my academy. Again, I'll leave the link to my courses in the description of this video. But with that being said, I do appreciate your time and have a great day.